So let's take a look at the overall model for self-hypnosis that this entire course is built upon. And I am, of course, going to be going through each of these different steps in considerable depth, such that by the end of the course, you're going to have a deep and thorough understanding into how to use self-hypnosis for your own personal development. So the first step is the preparation phase. And this is where you do some pre-work, you make sure that you're safe, but you also go through what I call a settling process, just so that the induction can go as smoothly as it possibly can. You probably don't want to dive straight into some kind of hypnotic induction and just hope for the best. Unless you're very experienced and you've done this a lot, there are some things you want to lay out before you go into trance. So first of all, you're looking to do an ecology check. And this is predominantly about checking for safety. You want to make sure that you're safe. Obviously, you don't want to go into trance while you are driving. Well, you know, we do sometimes go into a natural trance when we're driving, but you don't want to do some kind of eyes closed process when you're flying along the motorway. I think that goes without saying, but you know what I mean. But you also want to do some pre-work as well. Because when you're doing self-hypnosis, you don't have someone else hypnotizing you. Unless you record your own voice on some kind of audio facility, then you have to direct yourself from within. So a key thing to getting this to work is to do as much pre-work when it comes to setting your intention as you possibly can. So all of that is done before you go into trance. This is also often called priming, and it can range from simply just writing out one single positive suggestion to things that are much more comprehensive. It could be a question and answer session with yourself. It could be where you do research on a particular topic that you're going to advance. It could be lots of different things. And I'm going to give you lots of variety and lots of help on doing that pre-work section. But it's also about settling. A lot of the time when we attempt to go into trance, because we are preoccupied with the many things that we have to experience during the day, maybe we are stressed, perhaps our attention is divided on lots of things, we're thinking about the shopping, we're thinking about picking the kids up, we're thinking about work tomorrow, we're thinking about X, Y and Z. It can sometimes be difficult from that place to go straight into trance. So what is a really nice little segue is to go through a few different settling processes just to bring your attention down to the moment so that you can naturally and comfortably go deeply into a really wonderful altered state of trance. So I'm going to show you a few different ways that you can use. You don't have to use all of them. You can pick your favourite and then go with that. One of the things you'll also find is that when it comes to doing settling, they are actually quite hypnotic themselves. So you might find that when you start to do the settling process, it will actually take you into trance anyway, but it's generally used as a segue into some kind of deeper and more profound altered state of consciousness. Then once we've done all the preparation, we then of course move on to the induction. Now, in my opinion, when you are doing self-hypnosis, you don't need to learn about five or six different inductions. Two or three is enough, and then you find the one that works for you. So in this section, I'm going to give you some choices that you can use. We're going to look at how you can do this in a very natural way, but I'm also going to show you some classic ways to induce uh, some kind of piece of self-trance work or self-hypnosis. Then once you have gone through the induction, you've done your preparation, of course, that's when you then start to go into the change work. And this can be as simple as considering a new alternative to going through some kind of imaginary technique. One of the things I love to do, and I'm going to be explaining this in a bit more depth as we move throughout the programme, is I like to incorporate the body into change work too. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to jump about and dance and do all kinds of weird things while you're in trance. Hey, if you want to do that, then fill your boots by all means but it will involve taking on what I call some kind of somatic representation of the change you're looking to experience. Not always, but I do tend to incorporate these into the piece of change work you are experiencing. But again, when we come to this section, I'm going to show you lots of different ways. I'm going to give you lots of templates, lots of techniques you can use to deal with various different types of changes in self-hypnosis. 
And then the last section or the last part of the process is the integration phase. And this is really quite simple. It's where you've done a nice piece of change work and you just kind of let it integrate. Sometimes when you're in trance, you do experience a very profound change. A lot of the time though, the change happens after the experience of hypnosis. You often don't wake up from hypnosis and go, wow, the world is an amazing place, I'm cured, I feel amazing. That really happens. A lot of the time you do feel amazing when you're in trance, but most of the amazing changes happen after the trance. As the various different suggestions, ways of thinking, new ways of feeling and being start to integrate into your everyday lives. Because of the nature of hypnosis, many of the changes happen at a pre-conscious level. So it takes a little bit of time for you to notice the changes, to notice the fruits of the change work that you've done in trance. At this stage as well, it's also time for you to take feedback. So I'm going to give you some guidance on that. Usually the best way to do this is give it some time and then notice what changes you've experienced, reevaluate, and then take the feedback and then feed it back into your preparation for your next trance. And I find this whole cycle can work really quite powerfully because you're learning from your experiences and then you're bringing those learnings into your next piece of trance work. So hopefully this gives you an overall snapshot view of where we're heading with the course. Just keep this in mind as we progress. I'll see you shortly in the next video.